Hi guys, it's Mercy's Wrath here, or I am Wrath for those of you who know me on For Affinity. Um, uh, today we're working on another sort of tutorial. Uh, we're going to do like a color with me sort of follow along video. Uh, this video is probably going to be longer than some of my other ones because I'm going to be doing like a real time coloring thing. Uh, so that you can see how long stuff actually takes me. Because speed paints can be a little bit intimidating for people who are starting out in art. Or people like me who I've been doing art forever and I watch speed paints and just can't figure out how they do stuff. Uh, so we're doing a, it's going to be mostly a Clip Studio tutorial because this is Clip Studio paint. Um, but most of these techniques should work similar in other programs. Uh, most of the time I find programs are very similar to each other. So you should be able to find something that works for you. So as we see, this is actually my um, line art for September. I had a different one for my Patreons for a while and then I, I switched it so that I could do this video and there would be, then the content would be out earlier. Uh, so this is gonna be my September line art. Uh, this is my character, uh, Mercy. This is my Sona, technically. Um, and she is supposed to represent me as a person. Um, so right here we have her sitting on the, uh, like a side of a, the road sort of thing. It was supposed to be like a roadside curb or something. Um, some of you have probably seen the other version of this with a lot of other characters and uh, I decided that would be way too much to color so we're just gonna color Mercy today. Um, I'm probably going to let, make this uh, line art available for other people besides my Patreon to color in case you want to follow along. Um, but we'll see. So over on the right hand side I have my two folders. I don't usually name my folders because I keep track of them pretty easily but you can name them if you want to. This folder is the line art, and the folder below it is the, uh, both of the sketches are in here. So we're gonna turn the sketch off, the sketch folder off and just keep the line art folder on. Now I have this, this right here is still a vector layer. That's what this little thing right here means, is it is not a raster layer, which means I can't do a whole lot with it. So we will rasterize that. So if you click and go into, there should be, a, if you right click it, uh, it should bring up a drop down menu and you can hit rasterize and it will turn the layer into a raster layer versus a vector layer. So I'm going to make another folder. This one I'm going to put between two and one. Folder three. This is going to be where all my colors are. So down here at the bottom, these are vector layers and these are raster layers. So I'm going to put a raster layer down. You always color on raster layers. Or I always color on raster layers. I don't see a reason to color on vector layers. So I, al so, um, I always start with the the skin or the fur in this case so we're going to go over this is my reference for my character i always have it open and we're going to select oops wrong button and we're going to select the main color now i this color here is a little bit too close to uh pure white and i don't like to work with pure white so i almost always if it's close to white i always try and dull it down a little bit that way it'll be easier to shade later so she's kind of like a cream color as her main color. I'm just going to use my, I usually just use my um, my magic wand tool or my auto select tool because it works easier. It doesn't always work for everything um, but it works most of the time. The other thing you can do is if you go into your brush and I already have this set up but I'm going to show you how to set it up if you don't have it set up. You go into um, the show like tool sub tool details and you open it and it'll bring up a little thing now unfortunately you can't see it on my screen but it'll bring up like a little sub tool detail box and then on the left hand side you should be able to find a, an option called anti overflow and if you click that it's, it's on the very bottom of mine if you click that it'll bring up a couple things on the right and you have little boxes, kind of like the ones you have over here for layers that have, that if you click them, it'll put eyeballs up on them. Um, click the first one that says, do not exceed line of reference layer. And the last one, which says area scaling. Click both of those for the eyes so that they show up on the side here. So that I can show you this technique here. So if you click do not exceed line of reference layer, this is a really good way to color if you don't want to use the magic wand tool like I like. And then you go over here and you have this little thing right here that sets things as a reference layer. So you're going to want to set your line art as your reference layer. And then you're going to hit do not exceed line of reference layer. So it's checked over here. And this makes it so as long as the middle of your brush stays inside, it will not color on the outside. See that? 
So this is really useful if you don't want to use the magic wand tool. Uh, it's not perfect, you know, it's, it's not absolutely perfect. If you've got little tiny lines, it's hard to get in the middle of them and things like that. But this works really well if you don't like the magic wand tool. For me, I'm just going to use the magic wand tool. Because I prefer the magic wand tool. Oops. So I'm just going to select all of the fur, or most of it. Okay. Gonna color that. Now I always go in afterwards. I'm gonna turn off. Oops, wrong one. Turn off reference layer. So I always go back in and make sure that I get all the spots that I want colored. Because sometimes right up next to things like the eyelashes here, you gotta have to go back over those. Things like that. So I just do like a quick check through and make sure that everything is colored the way I want it to. And I'm not missing any sections. Technically this will be black, but that's fine. Because like sometimes fur it doesn't it doesn't work perfectly, fur and things like that. So, but it seems like for the most part it did pretty good at selecting everything I wanted it to select. Still here. Okay, so just go through and make sure everything is colored the way you want it. You don't have any spots in your colors, because that'll show up a lot later. So now you have your base color here. Oh, we forgot this ear over here. I should probably do that really fast. All right. Again, I'm just going to check, make sure there's nothing running into places it shouldn't. All right. Now we're going to make another layer above that. So it's going to be above your last layer. Uh, and this layer we're going to clip at layer below. I do this with every every type of marking on the fur. Now we're going to combine it all into one layer once we're happy, but at first you want them to all be separate. So we're going to separate this layer. Now we're going to select this brown color right here. Okay. Now it's always good to have your reference open. I actually am going to have it open on my other screen because I, t I have two screens right now. So I'm going to keep my other reference layer open, like on my other character open where I can look at her really easily. Just because it's easier that way um, when you're doing coloring to make sure you get markings right. Um, because some characters have really complex markings, so it's, it's just good to keep it open. So let me open that. I forgot to do that. All right. So I have her open on another screen. So that way it's going to be easier to do this. So now we have this uh, brown color, this darker, or the lighter brown color. We're going to go in and we're going to... I usually start with a big brush. I like to use with bigger brushes than what I'm working with because I'm, I'm very light when I push. So we're going to go in and sort of add in these markings. These can be a little bit messy. Don't feel bad if these are a little messy because they're not going to be perfect. And you can always go back and recolor things. And because I didn't put a line between the ear and the fur, I'm actually going to, going to go back and I'm going to use this brush or the the airbrush to sort of fill in right here so that it kind of fades out. Uh, we're going to use a soft brush, a soft eraser here so that it looks okay. All right. With this character specifically, um, I'm not super picky about her markings personally. Like, I like them to be kind of per like, you know, sort of the right markings in the right area, but if they're a little bit random, that kind of makes it look more like she's like they're natural, I guess. So that's one of the reasons I use the bigger brush, because it sort of takes away a lot of the control I have of the character. Um, and this side of her face is not covered very far by her markings. On the other side of her face it goes further over, but this one stays away from her muzzle. 
this ear is actually not fully marked either, so we're going to go back in with the eraser. And sort of take the top of that off. There we go. Okay. Her other ear is the same. The tip of it is not brown. Neither her, the tips of her ears are brown, so you just kind of... This one actually has less on it, so... There we go. Okay, and if you can see right here, we missed some spots next to the eyelash. See, you can see the white through right across here and here. So all I'm going to do, it's really easy, is you select your, your base color again. Oops, I am on the wrong thing. Okay, you select your base color again. And then you go back in to your main layer. This is not the sec this is not the clipped layer, this is the main layer. And you just go right over top of that. And because the, the layer is clipped to it, it's going to show up there. So if you were to go off like this, you'd see the clipped layer as well. So you just fill in where you missed. Because you will miss, especially with like light colors like the cream and stuff. Sometimes it can be hard to tell if you're missing a section. So don't feel bad going back in and refilling. That's also why we use clipped layers so that you can... You don't have to like go back and redraw all that, if that makes any sense. So, and then in here, we don't have quite all the color I want in here, so I'm just going to go right in here and just touch it up. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do if you don't like the way that this pattern is turning out is you can always take the eraser and sort of hit in and take sections out of it like that. Uh, that'll make it look a little more, I guess, natural, I guess. So that it doesn't look like it's only coming out one way. So I don't know if that made any sense at all, but you know, I like the way it looks. So we have the face done and we're going to move on to the body. Her back, the back of her neck doesn't have any color on it really. So it's got, it's her shoulders kind of come back to sort of an open pattern here. It's cream. So there we go. And then goes down the back for the move, for part of it, and then it opens back up to being cream again. So So like that. I have used this sort of technique with the erasing spots as well on a couple characters. It looks really cool. It gives you a really nice look. Um, just if you go too far with it, you can always go back over it and add in more spots to fill it back in. But it gives it a very interesting sort of texture to it. So I like to, I like to do that. Now, for I don't know if I explained it, but I will really quick now that I'm thinking of it. Uh, clipping layers is a really interesting thing that you can do in Clip Studio. I know there's stuff similar to it in other programs, I just don't know what it's called. Uh, basically, this means that no matter where you draw on this layer, it won't show up unless it's or unless it's it will only show up on it'll only show up on the area that um, it's clipped to. So if I was to unclip this, you could see where it would just come off of the skin, but because it's clipped to the skin, it only shows up on the skin. And I forgot to mention that. This is also how I do all my coloring, but we'll go into that when we get to the shading and stuff. So right now we're just doing the main character colors. See, I made this a lot bigger so that I could get it to spot easier. Okay. So, go in with my eraser and take couple sections of this out. Okay. 
I don't really like that very much, so I'm actually going to just erase this area in here because I don't like the way that turned out. If you don't like it, don't feel bad going back and just going, you know what, let's start over. I do that all the time. <laughs> Where I look at something, I color something, I'm like, wow, I just hate the way that looks and go back. Okay, that's not too bad. All right, so both of her arms do that. So it would come down a little bit on this arm. You'd be able to see a teeny tiny bit. So you can always just go in and fill that in like this. Okay. So now we're kind of getting some of the shapes, all the some of the colors in. I actually don't like the way this looks over here. So I'm going to change my tactic. And I'm actually going to just do more spots, kind of like what we've been doing with the rest of it. Usually, I separate the ear from the main head, so this is my own this is my own problem, my own fault, really. You can always go in with line art if you want to and sort of separate that, and it'll look fine too. But I just don't want to adjust the line art if I'm doing a coloring tutorial. Because we're not here to adjust line art. We're here to learn to color. Okay. And everyone has their different way of doing things. So if you find that something else works better for you, do that. This is just the way that I do my coloring. So... Checking my reference. Okay. So most of her legs are going to be brown, uh, other than like the inside of the thighs. So, whoops, I'm on the wrong thing. So I'm just gonna, I'm actually just gonna use my magic wand to fill those in. Okay. And the inside of the thighs are sort of spotted, so. If you don't want your color to run into another limb, the way that I do it is I actually select that limb. So I'll show you here. So because I don't want to accidentally erase any of this stuff in here right now, I'm just gonna select it and then it will only erase in the selected area. So there's that right there. And you can deselect it when you're done. Oops. Keep forgetting to hit the right. There we go. My new tablet has a, the ability to switch between pen and eraser, and I sometimes will forget if I'm on pen or eraser. So if, if that happens, that's probably what it is. So I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of cream color into here, just to represent the fact that the inside of the thighs do that. But you could leave that dark colored if you wanted to. It's always a good idea to try and keep in mind which leg is which, because in this, in this picture her legs are crossed, so you have to keep in mind that these are crossed. So this leg, um, this leg here is actually this one. This is one foot. And that way you can tell uh, what spots go on what. So, because on this foot, it comes down across the top of the foot, but not on the other foot. So, There we go. Okay, and this is the other leg. And the other leg is spotted all the way down to, or is colored all the way down to about here, and then it kind of, 
It covers the heel. And if you see right there, we missed a spot, so we'll go in and we'll recolor that. So select the main cream color. Oops. There we go. And color this one here too. Okay. So that's pretty good for the markings there. For her markings at least. Um, now the pain in the butt care the pain of the butt about this character is she's a brindle character, which means she's got stripes pretty much all along her entire body like the entire part of her body, all of the brown, has a secondary layer of brown stripes. Now this can be really intimidating, um, but really all you do is you take this, you can take this as heavy reference and try and copy them, but that's going to take you so long. So all I do is I do this one of two ways. So the first way I can do it is you can unclip this layer, because even though you've got all this stuff on the outside, you're just going to reclip it afterwards make a new layer and clip it to that layer because you don't want the stripes to go onto the cream so you want them to stay in the brown so you can do that or you can do all you have to do is lock transparency which means it's it's pretty much like having the layer clipped already whoops I use a pink whatever um, if you lock transparency it'll stay within the brown um, this doesn't give you as much room for like if you mess up and you can't clear the whole layer because if you clear the whole layer you'll clear all of your brown markings so I suggest doing it as a clipping a layer because that way if you mess up and you really hate all of your stripes you can just clear the whole layer and start over again and you won't accidentally ruin everything so um, with these you just kind of crisscross them and attach them at some times. Uh, sometimes you attach them, sometimes you don't. There's not really a rhyme or reason to them. They're just sort of everywhere. So if you feel like it needs a stripe, just add a stripe to it. this part is probably the longest part for this character. She takes a very long time when it comes to her stripes. Uh, keep in mind around her eyes that the only real like markings I like to add to her is around her eyes are darker. So like it almost almost like she's got eyeshadow. So I always just kind of use this as reference and fill that in like that. That's really the only specific marking she has and I like to bring these up like this. So Oops. the other good thing about having a clipped layer versus having a uh, transparently transparency locked layer, you can erase on the clip layer. You can't erase on the transparency locked layer. because otherwise you'll erase the under brown layer too. So. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna do all of the lines. I'm gonna do all of her stripes, which like this is probably gonna be the longest part of this character. Um, but we're gonna do all of her stripes. And then once we're done, Frankly, we're going to go back and we're going to combine the two layers together once we're happy with it. And then, after you combine these two layers together, you can reclip it to the bottom layer, and it'll put all the markings in the right place. So. And I could speed this up, but we're going to keep it at the same speed because I want this to be kind of like a follow-along 
sort of video. Or a video where you can see how long my stuff takes. <laughs> Cause stripes take forever. It's one of the reasons I don't do art of this character very often. Not because I don't love her. Because I do really love this character. She's just very time consuming to do art of. I wanted to do different sizes, shapes on all of them, on different stripes, different lengths. Um, that way it'll look more like what you want it to. <clears throat> okay. Um, I also like to flip the canvas sometimes if I ha I'm having a hard time getting the angle of something right. Or turn the canvas. It sort of helps. It helps me at least. You can also look at realistic references if you want to, to get sort of more of an idea what your lines are supposed to look like, if you're struggling. But the big thing about this is you don't, you don't want to spend a million years on these, because you can. You can spend, I've done it before, you can spend so long perfecting these, but you have to remember that it's supposed to be a natural it's supposed to be a natural recurring sort of shapes and stuff. It's supposed to be... It's supposed to have some semblance of what the fuck am I doing, I guess. <laughs> Otherwise it looks too realistic and then... Or it looks too perfect, I guess. You like that. You need that imperfection in this sort of situation. Um, and you can some you can somewhat follow what's on the your reference, uh, but... It's really difficult to do that. Like, I wouldn't expect anybody, even if I was paying for a commission, I would not would not expect an artist to follow her reference exactly, because she is quite the complex character. Solely for her markings. So, like, this is one thing you can pay attention to, is, you know, obviously the tail, most of it is this dark color. Like, the whole top of the tail is dark. And then it sort of... Then it sort of branches off and does more stripies underneath. But the whole top of the tail is a dark color. So things like that you can pay attention to. Or if you see, if you see a marking or a spot that stands out to you, that you can, like, you can add that specifically. So if you look on here and on her reference, her tail has a little spot here, and then I saw there was a little spot here, so I added that that specific spot right there. So if you are looking at something and part of the marking stands out to you, you can add it, and it'll it'll help it'll look like you know you paid attention to the reference. Yeah. 
For simpler stuff, you should follow the references. You should follow the reference as exact as you can. Just with this particular character, she's so difficult to follow her reference because of her markings. I wouldn't expect it of anybody. So... But I'll tell you right now that the markings will really are really going to add a lot to the character once we shade her. Like her markings make her look so cool once we shade her cuz it's they stand out really well. So you'll get like a really cool like when you do the highlights and stuff, the brown underneath will stand out really brightly. It's it's really neat. Let's see. I don't want it to be too Tiger stripes kind of do the same thing. Or this is kind of what I do when I do tiger stripes. I have a habit of getting too stuck in making it look perfect. Uh, so here we're going to actually... Oops. We're going to actually select this area. There's also a selection pen that I'm going to use. There we go. Okay. And I selected that because I didn't want it to go up too much in the... Uh, the main, like the other legs, so. And this one you don't have to be too worried about just because you're not going to see a lot of the You don't see a lot of the stripes, so this one is mostly just striping it, however. If you're really struggling with markings, my biggest advice is look at realistic. Like, look at some actual brindle dogs. So, if you look up the, the term brindle, it'll come up. Um, they're usually not as... it doesn't usually stand out this well. And this is a pretty simplified version of what brindle looks like. You can also look at, uh, the other thing I would look at if you're really struggling is look at some, um, some stripes on other animals. Like look up some tigers, see how they're striped, things like that. That's how I would, that's what I would suggest to people who are really, really struggling with markings. Uh, markings will also sort of follow the, the, they'll follow whatever they're on, so they'll go around an arm, they'll go around the leg, so if you keep that in mind for the angle and stuff, it'll help too. So I'm pretty happy with this, you know, you could always go in like and thicken some of these ones in here, because I feel like they're a, a little thin in here, so we'll go in. Add a little bit to these guys in here. I think it'll look a little better if they're, you know. Oops. There you go. Okay. So I like that. I think that looks good. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, if you're not sure about something, so like let's say you're not sure about it and you want to see what it's going to look like. Hold on, there we go. Okay. 
Okay. So if you're not sure about something and you're like, you know, I think I like this, but I'm not sure. Save it. So I'll let it save for a sec. Okay. So now that it's saved, combine it. So this one here, combine to lower layer so that you have one layer and then clip it. And you'll see how it looks. I like this, so I'm going to save it again. If you don't like it, you can always hit the back button a bunch um, and get to where you want it to be. So now that I like that, we're going to go to the next step. So all of her markings are pretty much taken care of. She doesn't really have any other markings that are really obvious or really specific here. Uh, so we're going to go into doing... Uh, we're probably going to go into doing hair next. That's usually what I fill out next. Um, I usually do fur hair clothes or fur clothes hair, whatever I decide to do best, whatever I decide to do next. So I'm going to leave this clipped here just because if I was to be doing a, like if this was a commissioner's piece of like a commission, I would send, I wouldn't combine everything together until I was sure that the commissioner was happy with what I had. So I'm going to add another layer. And sometimes when you add a layer like above, like if you add a layer between a non-clipped and a clipped layer, it'll automatically clip to the bottom layer so that it doesn't ruin your, your layers, because if this was unclipped, it wouldn't work. So move that down and make sure it's unclipped. So add a new layer here. Um, and we're going to do... Actually, before we do the hair, we're actually going to... Actually, leave that there so it's clipped. And then we're going to do the ears because the ears are technically part of the fur or the skin and they'll all be shaded together so all you want to do is fill in the inside of the ears Um, I think that the, pa the, the paw pads would probably also be filled in, but because they're a different texture, I usually leave those to be on a different layer. But you can also put them on this layer as well. Um, and because I'm not sure about this area, we're going to sort of just right across here. That's going to be white. There we go. Like that. All right, I like that. So now we're gonna add the layer below our skin layer. And the reason it's below our skin layer is because then if we're coloring anything in here, we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about it going over top of what we've already done. So uh, Mercy has two different versions of her hair. She has a pink and she has blue. Um, depending on what colors you wanna do the, the clothes, you wanna pick the hair color. So I think we're gonna do blue because I like the, it's like a teal blue color. Um, and anywhere in this spectrum is usually okay. I kind of like to brighten it a little bit. Uh, but I'm just going to take my magic wand tool and select hair. Because of the way I do hair, this can be a little bit difficult because <laughs> there's a lot of it. So all you, all this does is you want to get most of it. You don't have to get all of it with the select tool. This is just so that there's less of you going through and refilling things in. Like, you don't want to spend a million years trying to stay in the lines and color. But you get most of it done, then you can go in and you can adjust it. It just saves you some time. So, we're going to go through and we're going to refill this. All right, so now I have the hair done. It's teal. Um, if you're gonna do, like if you have a character that's got multicolored hair or 
uh, streaks in their hair. This is where you would do the same thing you did with the body. You'd add another layer, you'd clip the layer, and you'd draw whatever you wanted on top of it. Uh, she doesn't. You can always add it if you want to add it for, like, sake of, I don't know, sort of just giving it kind of a detailed look where there's certain areas that are different colors. You can do that if you want to. Uh, we're not going to do that in this video. You can do that if you want to. Just going to delete that layer. Okay. So now that we've got the hair, we're going to add another one underneath the hair. We're going to do the clothes this time. So you can do really whatever you want for the clothing color. Um, the top and her bottom are probably going to be different unless you want it to be a dress, which you can be, it can be a dress if you want to. Uh, I'm going to do it as a dress probably, and then I'm going to show you some texturing stuff as well. So the big thing to remember about clothes, like I, if you're not sure what you want to do, so here I'm, I, I kind of know what I want to do, but I'm not really 100% sure on what colors I want everything. You can always change the color after you've drawn it in. So if you're not sure, just pick a color, go, you know, she's got browns, she's got the blue, why don't we do, we'll do a pink for the, the, the clothes. We'll do like a sort of a, a faded kind of pink. So like this color. And we select it. We're going to do the bow, uh, a different color as well as the band. So select it and fill it in. And then because you're going to do the bow a different color, fill it in. On a different layer. Okay, and then you know, why don't we do? Oh, let's see. We don't want it to be too different, usually in the same spectrum. You can fill in a darker red. Now, if you don't like this, like I'm not sure about this, lock transparency on both of those layers. So both of these have locks next to them. And that way, make your thing really big and you can just change the colors as you go. So if you're not sure and you want to try it, let's just try a blue instead, like a light blue for the dress. Okay. And then we're going to do like a lighter pink this time because I kind of like the pink and the blue difference there. there that's kind of like a pastel color. Uh, but I think we're going to try for more of a purple color, like a lavender. So just kind of, you can just fiddle with it until you're happy with the colors. Um, there's not really a rush on this. So don't feel rushed. I like this color, but I think I'm going to go for something a little, oops. That's fine. Forgot to switch back over to my pen. So, because I don't want it to be too close to the hair, so I'm going to change it colors a little bit till I'm happy with what I'm doing. Do a green too. That's more like an Easter green though, so we'll do that. Or if you're not sure, you can always do a black. If you're going to do a black color, don't do a pure black because if you do that, you can't shade it and you can't tell the difference between your lines. So do a lighter gray. Like almost to the point where you're not sure if that's a good black because you will be shading it so it will look darker when you're done with it. So let me just fiddle with these for a little bit because I'm not sure what I want. You can also end up doing pretty much the same color for, you know, the bow with a bright blue or something. You can you can fiddle with that as you will. I'm trying to do something more like a summer dress, so let's try blues and yellows. Sorry, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this, so we're sort of... I really don't like yellows. Let's not do yellows. I changed my mind. do a pink color instead then. I think the pink looks alright. And instead of a blue, we'll do a purple color. Alright. That's alright. Well, I'm happy with that. Okay. So... Don't forget to save regularly. I do. I forget all the time. 
Um, I'm going to do textures and patterns. So I want to do a pattern on this dress, but I'm not really sure what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer and clip this layer to the layer below. You can do this a couple ways. You can draw a pattern. So if we're going to do flowers, we can go in and we can draw little things on the, the, the outfit. You draw like a flower and then you copy and you paste it all over the place. Or if you, this is more of if you have a Clip Studio program. If you don't, sorry. <laughs> but you can select your two colors. We're going to select these two colors. And you can go into your little decoration and you can pick a decoration. Now, some of these that I have are ones I've downloaded and so you won't be able to copy them. Like this one is one I've downloaded. That's oh, too big. Little tiny particles. Um, but you can always download one. If you have Clip Studio, this button up here is a download button. You can open that, you make an account, you can search for whatever you want. Floral patterns, whatever. But I'm going to try and use one that's from the actual program so that you can follow along. Let's do lilies, maybe? What do these look like? Those are alright. So all you do is you add a couple of them here and there. Like that, you could do that. Um, if the you, This one you can drop the brush size and get little tiny lilies. Uh, you can do roses. I like the roses on this program are really pretty. I feel like they're really pretty. I have to turn down the particle size on those. You can do roses. Um, so give me just a minute to pick something. No. I don't like the sunflowers either. And if you can't find you one you like, you can always, we can always draw something. Because I'm not finding any that I really like, so... I'll probably just end up drawing something. Okay. So we're going to draw something. So unclip this layer, and we're going to do something on the side here. Let's go back to your main brush. Uh, this is a Clip Studio thing. If you don't have this, uh, you can draw your own pattern and sort of do what we're doing. With Clip Studio, this is something really cool that it has. So uh, go into... Uh, this tool right here, it'll probably look like a box or something, and then go into circle, or go from boxes to boxes, boxes and circles into ruler, and hit the symmetrical ruler. Uh, right now I have two lines, which means it'll be half, but we're going to do, pick like four lines. Pick a couple lines, there we go. And then just click. Okay, so we're going to do something over here. Probably just some sort of... This is a really cool tool. I like this tool a lot. Uh, it's good for a lot of things. So you could do like sort of a little flower. Uh, if you like some of it but decide you need to erase it, Select the transparent option here, otherwise it won't be even. Like if you just erase it, for some reason it doesn't erase symmetrically. I don't know why. Oops. So something like that. We're going to do that. Okay, and delete. If you go over to your layer, you can actually select this right here, the symmetrical rule part, and you can delete it so it's not symmetrical anymore. Okay, so I like this this little shape here. So we're going to lasso the shape, select it. Okay, and we're going to move it and shrink it down. And we're just gonna make a tiny one of it. And, and then just go in and duplicate the layer, and then move layer, and just sort of throw it all over the place. Uh, 
And this is also going to be clipped. Once we're done, all of it's going to be clipped. So you don't have to worry about it being off in weird areas. Do one more over here, just barely in that section right there. Okay, so you want to make sure you've got all these and just completely just continue to combine them until they're all together. Okay, and then flip it. And now you got a texture. The other way you can do this is just by adding a clipped layer. Uh, I wanted a pattern, but if you want just a texture, add a clipped layer. Turn it to like a multiply or a something like that, and then pick one of your your brushes and just throw it on top and dull it down, and you kind of have a, a texture to it. I might actually just do that as a so turn it down, put it underneath this, and there we go. You want to combine those together? Oops, sorry. Combine the multiply to the normal one, and then combine that to your main layer. So there you go. Now you got sort of a, a pattern going on as well. Um, you can go in and you can fit them to the, the outfit and stuff like that if you want to, but I'm not going to do that right now. So I've got a pattern. And you don't have to do that. You can leave it just one main color if you want to. It's not a big deal. Uh, we're going to make another layer. This layer is going to be below all the clothes and we're going to fill out all of the rest of it. Cat. Sorry. The cat has decided that it's time for her to be awake. Uh... I'm actually going to go in here and I'm going to fill in the eyebrow here because I'm not really too happy with the eyebrow being separate because I missed it. I'm just going to color that the same color as I did the, the stripes. You can't really even tell it's there, but that's fine. Alright, so this layer is going to be... I like to call this one the details layer. This is going to be all the rest of it. So this is going to be her eyes, this is going to be her nose, her mouth, her earrings, and her pads and her claws. So we're going to start with the eye. Now, I always do the eye a little differently. So what I do is I take a white red color, okay, and you fill in the eye completely. And then because we have the ear, Select the ear, the color of the ear, and fill that in right here. Okay. Now, we're going to do the actual eye itself. I always make another layer above this one, and I'll show you why. So we make another layer, and we're going to go in, and we're going to select her eye color, which is kind of like this uh, orange color here. And we're going to fill in the eye completely. Like that. Okay. Um, then you're going to lock transparency and you're going to add extra colors into the eye. This is how I always do my eyes. It makes them, I think it makes them look better once you're done, like when you're done coloring, it, it makes them look better. So I always pick a darker color and I use my airbrush and I fill it in across the top and across the sides. I always use this, oops. Okay, so I always pick a darker color. Sometimes I'll even do an extra dark color, like that. And like I said, sometimes I'll put it a little on the sides so you can see it's darker, just a tiny bit. You don't need a lot. A lot will go a really long way. So then you're gonna use the main color you have and then you're gonna add some light tones to it. Like that. That's how I always do my eyes. I think it looks better once they're done, like, completely colored. It just gives them sort of a multiple colors. It looks really good. And then I combine that to my main layer. Okay. We're going to go into the nose. I'll select her nose color, which is pretty dark, so I'm probably going to I lighten it a little bit. Okay. And because of the way this dog is, I'm actually going to add another layer, and I'm going to 
I'm going to add another layer to her skin. I'm going to erase some of it around here because I don't want it all here. And I'm going to take my airbrush with the same color as her nose, maybe a little lighter. And I'm going to fill in this area here. Because usually dogs are, they have darker colors around their noses most of the time. So, and I'm put on the lips as well. And you don't have to do that. I just want to do that because I think it'll look good. Okay, back down to the nose layer. Uh, we're gonna use the color for her tongue. Fill that in. And then, I don't know if you can see her paws. You can't, you can see her pads. So you click, select that. And fill those in. And this should be pretty easy now that it, because it's below all the other layers, you don't have to worry about it being exact. And as you see right here, some of the colors goes in, go into the pads, and I don't really want that there, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to erase. But I'm sort of a little, I can be a little bit uh, too picky about these things, so that's just me. Okay, now we're going to do the pads. Not that we did the pads, now we're going to do the claws. And she also has a claw color. Um... I try really hard to just pick color pick colors as much as I can when I'm doing people's characters because I want the character to look as exact as I can. I want it to look right, so. Okay, claws. Now we're going to do earrings. Now on her reference, her ears her earrings are black, but I'm actually just going to pick another color, so I'm going to go with a... I usually go with a silver, and when I do silvers, I do a blue, like a very light blue-gray color. Like that, because I think it looks better once you're done shading it. Technically, she has a piercing here as well, but we're going to pretend that's not there for this, this uh, picture, because I didn't put that in the line art. So, And we're going to say, oh, let's just go with the pink heart for right now. So that should be all of her colors. So. Okay, and I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna do the concrete here as a blue gray, a darker blue gray. And we're just gonna select, oops, and fill. And then I am going to do a multiply layer above that, clipped to it, and we're going to take. Some different textures and throw on some textures. Cut it down. Okay, and then another multiply layer. I combine them, I'm adding another multiply layer. And I think I have some really good marbling textures somewhere. This one's alright too. Just throw some of your textures on. Turn them down in uh, opacity if you're worried about it being too too bright or something, or too dark. Okay, and combine those together. Um, so now that we have our flat colors done, we're ready to do our shadows. I know, it took forever, didn't it? Uh, so we're going to go in and we're going to combine all of our layers that are clipped. So now they're all one layer. Right? And I like to make a layer that's above everything. Oops, it went into the wrong folder. Um, like a, I like to make this layer above all the other layers. And this layer here is going to be where our colors are going to be at. This is where we're going to be able to select colors from all the time. So... 
turn this to a multiply layer because everything we're going to be using is multiply layers to do our shadows. That's how I do my shadows. And you're going to want to select your pen tool. And you're going to try and select some colors you think would look good on this, uh, like shadows. So I never shade with uh, grays because it, it takes away some of the, I feel like it takes away from some of the, like, the life of the picture. So I'm going to use, I usually use pinks or reds. And you want to do a really light one for the first one. And all we're going to do is we're going to kind of color over it and decide if it looks okay on all the colors, which I think it does. So there we go. And then we're just going to drop it down a little bit. I use four different colors when I shade like that. And then if you select it to normal, those are what the actual colors look like. Um, then we're going to select it. We're going to turn it to an overlay layer. This is going to be where we do all of our highlights. And we're going to do, I always do a yellow, um, but you can do a blues, things like that, uh, because I feel like the yellow looks really good. So we're going to do a yellow. That's a good yellow. And then this is going to be a normal layer. So turn it back to a normal layer. All right. So you can do a couple different things with this. It doesn't matter what layer you start on. I'm going to start on the skin layer because I like to do the skin first because it's the biggest part of the picture for me. So make a new layer, clip it. And this is a multiply layer. Select your first one. Okay. And now is when you want to try and come up with where you want your light to come from. And I think we're going to do the light from uh, this corner here coming down for where our uh, color palette is. So it's going to come from this, this direction. So what I'm going to do first of all is I actually color the whole thing with your first shadow. And then go in and you want to erase where you feel like the color is going to be hitting the body, where you're going to feel like the light's going to be hitting the body. I feel like when I do it this way, I use more shadows and it, I just shade more because otherwise I feel like I don't have enough shadow on my picture. So. And if you can't really see where you're erasing, you can always turn this back to a normal layer so you can kind of see where your lights like where your light is hitting things. You don't have to though. That's just how I like to do it. Just makes it easier to see sometimes. Oops. Just gonna leave that dark in there because I think it'll look better that way. Okay. Now I always use a soft, like a soft shadow technique to my, uh, to my shading. So it doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to make sure that everything is perfect. When you're doing a cell shading technique, I always make sure that all of my lines are exactly how I want them to be because I want them to be, because I'm using a cell shading technique. That's just how I do it. Uh, but because we're not using a cell shading technique, most of it for me won't be exact. So, top of this one. Don't 
don't feel bad leaving big sections in shadow because a lot of it will be in shadow uh, depending on time of day and where the sun is at in this case since it's outside uh, okay so that's kind of how I want it right now and after you have your light done you're gonna select your next color down and this time you're gonna draw in where your shadows are gonna be so a lot of this is keeping in mind the shape of things uh, again you can also look at some references if you feel like you need them that's totally acceptable if you need to look at some light references or some references of dogs specifically this is a Boston Terrier so if you feel like you can't figure out how the shape of their face is and I'm not I'm not an expert at this either I just do the best I can keeping in mind where the high the light is at you can pretty easily add in your your shadows what's overlapping what and things like that And like the earrings will have a little bit of a cast shadow behind them. Oops. This I all do on one layer. Uh, so if you decide you added too much dark in one area, you have to go back and reselect the color before and draw back over it in a way to erase it. So keep that in mind. And almost her whole back will just be in shadow because it's completely against the it's completely facing away from the the light so some in there this arm is also probably going to be completely in shadow. So is the tail. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. But we're going to leave that like that. All right. A lot of this is going to be trial and error, things you like, things you don't like, um, so keep that in mind. Most of art is trial and error, so it's going to take a lot of doing stuff and failing and hating it and, needing to, and deciding, you know, next time I'm going to do this differently. So I find that doing the shadow, you know, completely doing the shadows and then erasing where I want the light to be helps me keep in mind the light source. Uh, but you may find it easier to just draw it all in yourself. This area will also be completely in shadow. And again, if you need to look at where your colors are at, kind of see in here where your highlights, where your shadows are at and stuff. That sometimes helps me. Not always, but sometimes. Okay, and you pick the next color and you just rinse and repeat. Do the same thing.
again. Okay. Oops. Now, your final color, this one isn't, this is uh, right before the final shadow. The final shadow that you use, or the darkest color you use, you want to use more sparingly, I guess, than the rest of them, because it's supposed to represent being the, the, the farthest away and the darkest the rest of the picture is going to get. Um, which is pretty obvious, I guess, but you want to use it a lot more sparingly than you use some of the other colors. And if you color in an area that's supposed to be light, just erase it. That's fine. It's not a big deal. That'll probably happen a lot when you shade it out. So. Okay. Yeah, I think I've used this one on everything. Maybe I used it here. Yeah, I have. Okay. Now you're going to use your last color. This is the darkest of all of them, and this should be the darkest your picture is going to get. I try not to use this one nearly as much as the other ones. Because a little bit of it goes a long way. And if your, your final color ends up not being dark enough, you can always add one more after that that's even darker. Like, you can always add more shadows to things, or more high well, not more highlights, but more shadows to make things look darker in certain areas. Just don't use pure black when you shade, because it'll be so hard to see your line art. Like, I I almost always tell people, don't ever use pure white and don't ever use pure black. The only time I use pure white in any of my drawings is when I'm doing my final highlights. And even then, it's the littlest. Like, I almost don't use any of it, and it's the opacity is turned way down. the arm just a little bit there oops a little bit right there it's gonna use a tiny bit right here next to the toes, too. Okay. I'm pretty happy with the way this looks so far. Yeah, just a little bit more on some of the areas here. Okay. Pretty happy with the way this looks so far. Um, and at this point, uh, I'm going to stretch my hand just a little bit. Don't feel bad taking breaks while you're doing art, um, especially if you're doing it all the time like I do. Uh, you really don't want to mess your hand up. So if, you, if your hand is sore, if your hand is tired, take a break. Um, I usually suggest a good 10-15 minutes, but because I'm recording, I'm not going to take nearly as long of a break as I usually do. Uh, just enough to stretch my fingers out. Because I, I, I have a habit of gripping my pen far too hard. So. <sighs> Alright. Now we're going to go in and we're going to use my brush. Now I use a smooth watercolor brush to sh do all of my blending. All of my blending is done with a smooth, smooth watercolor brush. Uh, depending on your tablet, your settings will be different. You don't want it to put down any color if you can avoid it. So I've turned the paint and the density of paint completely down. I think it looks better than a blur brush. I think the way it shades out looks better. Now, all you're going to do is you're going to go over the whole thing and shade it. Uh, if you want it to look like fur, you want to keep in mind kind of the 
direction the fur is going to go and sort of shade out like that. Um, but I don't usually worry too much about that unless it's a painting. So I'm going to shade everything out now. Try not to shade it out too much. If you shade it out too much, you'll lose your colors. You'll like you it, it kind of erases it almost a little too much. So you don't want to shade it out too much, or you'll lose a lot of the shadows that you have going on. And we're gonna do one more thing for shadows later anyway at the end of it. So okay. Turn that down, just a little smaller. Okay. And technically you can use a blur brush or something like that. I just prefer to use the watercolor brush. I think it looks better. I don't know. I like the way that it shades things out better. OK. 
Okay. Looks good. Good tail. Okay, I think we have everything shaded out. Alright. So now that you've got everything shaded out, if you think something looks like the lines are too harsh or something, you can always go in and shade it back out and fix it. Um, but for the most part, we're done with this. So we're going to add another layer on top of that. And this one is going to be a, an overlay layer. Um, this one is going to use the yellow color we picked out before. And you're just going to put that where you feel like it's going to hit, like the light's going to hit the body the most. And don't add too much of it. This will go, the stuff will go, like this color will go a long ways. And if you want to, you can add kind of like fur lines, I guess. And when you shade it out, it'll it'll look like it's got fur just a little bit. So remember, this is just where you feel like the light is going to actually be hitting the body. This is the lightest part of the picture, pretty much. Okay. And then you're gonna use the same brush you did before. I usually use a slightly smaller version of the brush, but it doesn't really matter. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Whatever size of brush works for you. And if you feel like you need to add more, like if the highlights aren't light enough, you can always add another overlay layer on top of that, but it, this should be enough for the most part. This should give you the look you want. Okay. Now what I usually do after this is I make another layer. This one is going to be clipped, but it's going to be a normal layer. Uh, using the same yellow, I use a, the hard brush for the airbrush, and I'll do, this is reflective light. Uh, basically all I do with this, because I'm not, I'm not very good at this, is I put it in the darkest areas of the picture. It just, it gives it a really cool, like, it helps a lot with like a, the 3D look that you're looking for. So... You want very little of this. Okay. This is supposed to represent like, um, the light from the area around the character reflecting back at the character. So, like the light that's reflecting off of the asphalt behind her or something like that. Um, you don't want to go too overboard with this, you want just a tiny, like, little bit of it on the darkest parts of your picture. Um, you can go overboard with this. If you do, just erase it. Use the soft eraser. But for the most part, this one is pretty easy. You can also turn 
You're also going to want to turn it down, like the opacity is going to be turned really far down on this usually too. Um, so technically this that I left light should actually be a reflective light and not a regular light, but that's okay. Um, I usually just push, I usually make sure that my brush is outside of the, the area that I'm trying to color with this. Like I just get the very outsides of the brush because um, I think it looks better. Yeah, this helps separate the lines. This helps define where your edges are of things. This is a little bit too much for me, so we're going to just hit the outside of it with the soft brush. The soft eraser is really good for this. like the look that gives things. So you can also turn that down really far so it's not very light. Um, usually 30% is a good place, but I'll leave it kind of kind of high for the contrast that's that it's giving us. All right. And then you basically rinse and repeat and you do that on all of the other layers. Um, so we're going to start with the hair. Hair is a lot more, I always do hair is like a lot more reflective, so I want to sort of like that. Keep in mind what part of the hair is in front of the face, what part curls back. Um, I always try and erase in the direction of the hair, because when you shade it out it'll look a lot better if you do that. And I also like to, when I do my shadows, the same way. You follow sort of the, the direction of the hair. You can also follow the lines, the, the line art, uh, because even though they're in light, they're still going to have a shadow there because technically it's two pieces of hair that are two chunks of hair that are coming together. So I usually still line, uh, line them just a little bit with shadows. As you see right here, I actually missed this section right here, so turn it off, go back, and fill it in, and just turn the multiply layer right back on. And it works! It'll, it'll get it, uh, it'll fill in that color for you. section there too so I'll go back and I'll fill that in too. I almost always miss sections in the hair because of just how close the lines are together. When you select it it won't select all of it. Okay, I'm gonna 
again. <clears throat> Fill in the sections that I missed. I'm sure there's more of them. It's almost always the hair where I miss sections. You can always go back in and fill it until you combine your layers together, which I never combine my shadow layers together, so. Okay, and this is now the darkest color. This is the darkest color, so you're going to want to be sparing with this one so that you don't go too overboard. But most of this area will be very dark because it's all the way on the other side of your light source. This area here is also getting almost no light, so you want to fill this in with a lot more of that dark color. Uh, hair is a little harder to do reflective light with. You can still do it, but it it's a little more difficult. I find it harder, so I don't use it as much as I do on the body. So now that we have the shadows in, use the same brush. Uh, I usually use a smaller brush this time because I want it to keep more of the lines, I guess. So, again, use whatever brush you're most, whatever size brush you're most comfortable with when you're shading. Because some of them will take too much of the color, some of them won't shade it out enough, so whatever you feel like is right for what you're doing. Just blend the whole thing all together. Uh, when you're blending, try and follow the like the form of the hair uh, because you want it to look like it's actual hair. So follow the form of the hair while you're going along and blending out. It'll make all the shadows follow the form of the hair too. This one I find doesn't need to be as blended out as much as the other, like as the body, uh, because it's hair, so you're gonna get like individual like weird spots and strands and stuff. So. And if you end up with spots like this that are too dark, you can always go back in and fill those back in. Because sometimes when you're shading out, you'll just end up shading it too much or bringing in too many dark light colors. So. Right. And don't forget to shade all of it out. <laughs> I almost always forget sections of hair or clothes. Okay. Okay, and now that you've got the shadows, we're gonna do the highlights for the hair. Okay. Now there's a couple ways I like to do this. I usually do two layers of overlay for my hair highlights. So I like to either do a line that goes all the way down it, like this. 
and then I shade it out like this or I will go like this across it. Um, but I think I'm going to do a line this time. So this is, you can add a couple of them. This is where the light's going to hit the most. Uh, you can also mix it with a couple of spots that's just drawn in like that. And then you're going to take your water, your watercolor brush. Uh, you want it to be smaller because you want to keep a lot of that the line still and you follow the line of the hair as you shade this out. So do each of them individually because it's easier that way. Okay. So I'm going to add another overlay layer, and sometimes I just duplicate it um, and get the, the same one on top, but this time I'm going to do just another one. And I'm going to do slightly smaller lines over top of the other ones, shade those back out. And that's the way I do my hair. Now we're going to add the reflective layer. I usually only apply this to one side of the hair. just a little bit along the inside. Like that. And, oops, I should probably put a little bit across here as well. Oops, a little bit much there, but that's okay. Okay. As you see, that adds kind of just a little bit more of a 3D effect to it. Okay, now we're going to do clothes. Now, the clothes are on two separate layers. I'm actually going to combine them onto one layer. And we're going to shade our clothes now. Same thing as before. Clip and multiply. And then fill the whole thing. I'm going to erase where our highlights are at. Of this down here darker. actually missed a couple little spots in here. Now, you want to be careful since we did all the texturing that you get the right color in the right place. It shouldn't be, as long as you got most of it colored, you should be fine. This color again. Here. Oops. 
じゃない Make sure you're on the right layer. And just like we did with everything else, you're gonna want to fill it out with each of the colors one at a time. Doing your best to remember where your light source is coming from. Um, I'm not the best with clothes, I'm gonna be honest. I've never been very great with clothes, but you're gonna wanna try and keep in mind how the clothes or the clothing is gonna bend around the body, uh, where there, there's gonna be wrinkles in it and stuff like that to try and get your shadows in the right place. Finally on the last color for the Slayer. Same as before, watercolor brush, and I usually just start with the top and go down, so then I don't miss anything.
And there's the shading for the clothes. And we're now going to do the highlights. And if you decide you want to lighten an area that's darker, uh, you can always throw in a little bit of the highlights in that area. Like a little there, a little here. But for the most part, I just use them for where the sun's going to be hitting places the most. Okay. Now we're going to do the extras. Same thing. Uh, these ones are always harder for me because I always forget an area. Like I always forget, oh, oops, I missed a toe or something like that. Uh, which happens all the time. You can always go back afterwards. So, these are extra shiny. So you won't actually blend these out nearly as much as you will other things because they're super shiny. And we'll probably add a, a texture to the nose because I like to add sort of a spot of texture to the nose. And this won't get a whole lot. And most of these won't actually have any, like the bottom of the pads probably won't have any light on them so okay and this one should go pretty fast most of the time because you've done they're not there's not as much space on these so It's good to keep in mind sort of how things are shaped if you need to look up tutorials or, you know, like specifically pop pads, they're, they're not flat. At least, not the bottom one has sort of a weird shape to it. You can always look at that or look at pictures of stuff while you're shading them to make sure you get the the right shape to things. Or you don't have to. I mean, that's totally up to you. I like to try and use reference pictures pretty often, uh, depending on what I'm working on. Just about done with this one. I'm going to there we go. Oh, we forgot our reflective 
highlights on our clothes. We'll have to do that. It's not as big of a deal like on things, the smaller stuff usually, but especially on stuff that takes up a lot of space like the clothes. It takes up a lot of the body. You're definitely going to want to make sure you get those reflective highlights in. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. They're in some places, but not others. So we are going to go back and do that. You can only do so much in like the little earrings and stuff. So just do your best with it. So we're actually going to go back really fast. And we're going to do the reflective layer. The reflective light on the clothes really fast. And I feel like especially in a piece like this one where a lot of it's in shadow, you really want to get that reflective light in. It'll really help bring your piece to life, I think. So. drop that opacity. I don't know if we did that with the other one too. What is it at? 85. As long as they're about the same, it'll continue to look the same around the whole picture. Okay, so now that we've multiplied, we're going to use our brush again, and we're going to shade this out. Um, I use a lot smaller brush when I'm doing these smaller details. That way you don't lose a lot of your color. And as you can see, I don't like the way this multiply like that was shaded out around the nose, so I went in and I fixed it. Okay. Don't ever feel bad about going back to something and fixing shading. So if you're like, you know, I really don't like the way it looks around the eye, you can go back to your first shadow layer where we did all the, the skin or the fur, and you can always go back and you can fix things. So especially when you're doing like super highly reflective stuff, you want to make sure you use a little brush so you don't lose your shadows too much. And you're always going to lose them a little bit when you blend stuff out, but with a smaller brush you lose a lot more, a lot less. Okay, and then you're going to do an over, another overlay layer. And you're going to go over these. You can always add this in here just to kind of lighten some of the areas, even though, like we said, there's not really a lot of sun in this area. You just blend it out quite a bit to give sort of an extra layer of color to it, which I like.
Hopefully that was blended out there, so... And we're adding another layer of highlights, so don't feel bad shading this one in the eye out quite a bit, and these ones as well. Okay. That should be all of that. Okay, and again, with the reflected light, there's not a whole lot I usually do with reflected light in the final stuff, but we're going to put a little bit on these paw pads. And a little on the claws. Oops. And a little on the nose. I don't usually put any in the eye though. Make sure you're saving. I haven't saved in a while, so eh, let's do that. All right. So we're almost done with this. Um, we got most of our shadows done. Uh, we haven't done our background stuff, so I'm going to do that really quick. Totally forgot we had that in there. So, because of where our light's at, she's going to be There's not going to be a whole lot of light a little behind her, but that's about it. With background stuff, sometimes I'll purposely skip out on like a, a layer or two of the the shadows just because you don't always need it with the background stuff or I feel like you don't you shouldn't but I do sometimes I didn't this time but. there's not really a whole lot of overlay in this one but we're going to throw a little bit behind her anyway. <laughs> and a reflected light. Turn that down. <clears throat> okay. Now that we're done with all of the the main sh uh, shading, you can see all of our layers here. Um, we're gonna do the main, the big highlights. So this is one. This is a layer above everything, including the line art. Uh, and this is where I usually do the biggest highlight for the eyes. To remember where our light's coming from. Okay. This is where all of the big light, like all the, your super reflective stuff will be reflecting And the reason it's above line art is if you do something like the eye, where it goes over the pupil, uh, you want it to go over your line art there. So 
I just do all of it over the line art. The other one I do here is I usually do a little bit of white across this, across the hair, and I blend that out. I don't usually blend most of these highlights out because they're going to be turned down pretty low, but I do blend it out across the hair. And you can do this across things you, like if your fabric is shiny. Or if you feel like your character is going to be shiny. Okay, uh, turn it down a little bit. And I'm actually going to go back into the nose here. And I'm going to add a texture to the nose. So we're going to add... This is going to be a multiply. And I have a brush for this. You may not, but you can just add a bunch of speckles to it. That's all I'm really doing. Trying to get good size for the speckles. And if I turn it to normal, you can see where it is. It's just sort of a speckling that I'm gonna multiply. You can also do an overlay for that if it's a, a lighter color. So, like if you used like that, it'll give it sort of a speckle look. So now that we're done with that, um, you could pretty much end the picture here if you wanted to fiddle with the background a little bit. I usually put just some sort of texture in the back and some colors. Uh, but I'm actually going to show you what I do if I'm not quite happy with all the shadow, like with the shading, and I don't feel like it's dark enough. You make another layer. This one should not be in any of the folders, and it's above your color folder, or your colors wrap. And you clip it to your color folder. And then you can also do this if you put your line art in your color folder too. So like if I take this and I just throw it in right there, that's my line art, all in one folder. So now it's all in one folder. You clip it and you do a color burn. Uh, this is gonna be, you're gonna wanna pick a color that you already shaded with because it's gonna add that color to your picture. So like if you picked a blue, it would add a blue to your picture, which we're not looking for. So we're gonna pick a red color. Maybe add a little more pink to it and then I use my I always use my airbrush for this because I don't want it to be too much and I go over areas where the shadows are darkest usually I'm not really happy with the color I picked, but that's easy to fix. So we're gonna pick that. Okay, so I'm not happy with the color I picked, so I'm gonna lock transparency and I'm gonna change it because you can just color the whole thing and change the, the color. So we're gonna do more of a purple. Mm, nope, I don't like that. Just a lighter pink maybe. Yeah, that looks better. I like this because it helps add just a little bit more shading that wasn't there. Like if you feel like your shadows aren't dark enough or whatever, um, this is what I like to do. And that's the difference. Also add it to the sidewalk behind her. And then I'm going to take a soft brush and just go over here. Okay. Um, I almost never leave this at 100%. I always turn it down. The reason it's clipped to the, the folder is that means it won't do it on the, the background of your picture either. It'll just do it on the color and the line art. And then we're going to clip another layer. And this one is going to be a color dodge or a glow dodge. Um, 
You can use a yellow for this if you want to, because uh, this is going to be really light. Now, we're not going to leave it that light. That's crazy. But we're going to use an airbrush, and you're going to hit the areas you think are going to be brightest. So it's good for if you want to make your eyes look brighter. So this is a really good tool. Um, you need to make sure you use it sparingly, because if you use it too much, you'll be able to tell it'll be way crazy. Because you don't want to kill your colors, you just want to bring a little more of your highlight into things. And again, with this, just like the last one, I don't ever keep this at 100% because you're going to end up with too much of a glow on everything and it's just going to look bad. So always turn that down. And again, with and without. Okay. And then you can hide this layer, which is your, uh, your old colors that you were using. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use because I'm doing my background now. I'm just going to do sort of a dark gray in the background and then we're going to do a blue. You can also do Some gradients like that. So do a gradient, uh, but because we're doing sort of a light sort of picture, we'll do more like this. There you go. So and then we're gonna do another layer on top. This is also gonna be a multiply layer. You don't have to clip this. You can if you want to. You don't have to. And I like this particular brush here. It's called the running color spray, uh, but you don't have to use this one. And let me just pick a color. We're going to do a blue. Um, texture of the background here. And turn it down really far. Okay. Um, you can add whatever else you want to it. Uh, I like to, I'll probably end up cutting the whole picture into a circle because I think it looks cute, uh, cute that way. Um, but yeah, so that's how I do my colors. Uh, I hope that this video helped you. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you followed along and you want to send me your picture, please do. I'd love to see it. Thank you for watching. Bye, guys.